What's up YouTube? It's your boy Josh Reese back at it again with another video. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe and we'll get right into it. So today I wanted to talk about uh, what vision therapy can do to you. I've gotten a lot of comments lately and people asking me uh, about vision therapy and about um, its kind of efficacy and, um, and they didn't know that it could do certain things. So um, today we're going to kind of discuss um, what vision therapy is a little bit more and then how that can apply to different people's lives and help them out. Um, so first things first, vision therapy is like physical therapy for the eyes. You know, uh, not everybody goes to the physical therapist, but you know, if you uh, have a broken arm, broken leg, something like that, and need to move a part of your body better, get those muscles strengthened, um, that's why you go there, right? You, you get those muscles uh, strengthened uh, and can use them a little bit better. So vision therapy is strengthening the muscles of the eyes, strengthening the connection that your eyes and your brain have, and overall being able to process your visual information a little bit better uh, to give you a better quality of life. So the first type of people we see in vision therapy all the time is little kids. Kids who maybe during their development didn't quite get it or have some type of refractive amblyopia where they can't quite process things or read or are things like that. So children are the first major demographic and we really help them do better in school. So getting better reading and tracking activities, being able to get rid of convergence and sufficiency, be able to look up close at things, go back and forth between the whiteboard and their desk, things that normal people take for granted are some of the things that these kids struggle with. So vision therapy really can help children do better in school. That's, that's ma one major, major thing is the parents will say, will notice their kids not doing well in school, and then they might notice it's something to do with the eyes and find our clinic on Google and, and go there, right? The next th uh, major demographic that we see is brain injured patients, whether it's a traumatic or acquired brain injury, a stroke, where your brain and therefore your eyes, which are you know the same tissue that your brain is made out of, your eyes is made out of. So the eyes are an extension of your brain. It's how your brain you know, touches the world is, is vision. And so this brain injured patients, the connections between their eyes and their brain uh, really gets out of whack after uh, an injury. And so um, whether or not it's processing the information uh, in the brain or the neural pathways between the eyes and the brain, these brain injured patients can't quite use their vision like they used to before. And so what vision therapy can do is help them use their, you know, the muscles that focus, the muscles that point, the muscles that track um, all better. Help them process their peripheral vision uh, when things are swimming, things are nauseous, things are dizzy. We can help the brain process that a little bit better. So we've seen traumatic brain injury patients um, do better in their work. You know, be able to work a 12 hour shift without being completely dead afterward. Being able to go outside without wearing sunglasses and a hat, right? This light sensitivity, um, this visual processing, it can all get better. Um, people would think they're dumb. People would think they, they can't do anything anymore. They can't work anymore. Vision therapy could help you process that information a little bit better. So we got kids go to school right and then we have traumatic brain injury patients now the next big demographic is everybody else really um, everybody can benefit from vision therapy I know uh, as a vision therapist um, I am able to work with people on a day-to-day -day basis that sometimes just would like to get a better ACT score and so we can work on the muscles that read and the muscles that process and really help this person get a better ACT score, if that's their goal, right? We can take the people where they are and make them better. Football players, athletes, um, whether or not they have a traumatic brain injury or not, um, will sometimes come in to better catch the ball, get better depth perception, things that we use all the time that we kind of take for granted. 
a lot of athletes will come in and and help that so it's kind of another subset of vision therapy is sports vision there's a lot of optometrists that work out there with uh, athletes to help them process help them bat better help them golf better help them uh, just process everything because that's really all sports is is predicting the future and being able to act on it a little bit better and so as you can process uh, your vision a little bit faster you can do a lot better in the sports you're competing in um, the next uh, really big thing uh, would be lazy eyes um, so we have you know school help you with that brain injuries uh, everyone and and lazy eyes that's one thing that uh, a lot of critics um, will attack vision therapy is the the credibility of getting rid of lazy eyes and it's not always a one-trick pony that can do everything but it does substantially help so I know a lot of ophthalmologists out there um, bless their souls they they will want to recommend surgery as fast as they can but sometimes that just treats the symptom and not the cause. Uh, the, uh, an eye will sometimes suppress or turn off or become lazy because the brain doesn't know how to use it very well. So if you have s surgery to point the eye straight again, you know, sometimes the eye will be able to, to pick up on that and, and be able to use it again. But more often than not, actually, the brain will still not know how to use the eye better. And the surgery doesn't take so usually it takes people about three surgeries on average to get rid of a lazy eye if they're just doing surgery um, but when we treat lazy eyes at the clinic most of the time actually no surgery is required they're able to get the depth perception get the cosmetic alignment that they would like um, without having to go uh, to an ophthalmologist to get surgery done now um, that's with the grain of salt because every case is different. There are some cases where, uh, you know, their ultimate goal is to get cosmetic alignment and that's most of the time always possible. But some patients, uh, goal at the end of the day is to get depth perception. And when you've had a lazy eye for 50 years or however old the patient is, it's going to be hard to teach the brain to do something it's never done before. And sometimes we're not able to get quite to the depth perception, but it does help use your eye better. And so those patients that were not able to quite get all the way there, uh, we refer out to ophthalmologists uh, for surgery. And then when they, and after surgery, we do vision therapy uh, when they get back. And then we get the results that we, that we want. And so, um, lazy eyes it's always it's the hardest one you know it's the hardest things to deal with in vision therapy because every case is just so slightly different every brain reacts a little differently to each activity but in combination with optometrists and ophthalmologists working together we can treat uh, and heal these lazy eye patients as well so if you're you know a child struggling with school or a person with a brain injury uh, someone with a lazy eye or just you know some Regular Joe who'd like to uh, use their vision a little bit better, vision therapy is for you. Go ahead and make sure to subscribe to the video so you get future uh, videos like this about optometry, vision therapy, and the like. See ya.